Duan Jiaxu came out of the hospital and saw San Zi sitting there waiting for him. He asked her, How did you come here? From your expression, I knew this day would come sooner or later. She opened her arms to him, and he began to cry as she embraced him. She comforted him, saying, I know you're feeling sad. It's okay. He said, Am I really old now? I don't even have parents anymore. Duan Jiaxu and San Zi arrived at the cemetery to pay their respects to his mother. He told his mother, Dad has also passed away. You two will meet on the other side. I hope in that world, you can make up for the misfortunes this world brought upon you, and find happiness and joy. Also, Mom, this is San Zi, the one I told you about before. She's my girlfriend now. San Zi addressed his mother, saying, Auntie, hello. You can rest assured that Duan Jiaxu is now a very good, very outstanding person. In my eyes, in my parents' eyes, and in the eyes of everyone, he is a very good person. Regarding his father's matters, he has worked very hard and endured a lot, taking on all responsibilities and paying off all debts. Please don't worry, I will take good care of him. Duan Jiaxu and San Zi were riding bicycles on the seaside boulevard, playfully chasing each other. In her heart, San Zi thought, the girl who used to sit behind me suddenly grew up one day, able to walk side by side with me, accompanying me through the longest darkness, and even taking a step ahead of me, waiting for me to catch up under the sunlight. She turned her head and called out to him, hurry up. They stood by the sea, gazing out at the ocean. He told her, I've resigned from my job at Yaihe, but I will have my own studio under the same company at Nanhu. She asked him, why? Didn't we agree that we didn't necessarily have to return to Nanhu? He replied, it's because I want to go back to Nanhu. I want to go ahead and settle everything there in advance, so that when you graduate and come back to Nanhu, we can start living a good life together. He continued, besides, your family is over there, and I'm always up for starting something new wherever we are. Wherever you are is our home. She asked him, so. How much longer do you have before leaving Yaihe? He replied, probably about a month from now. She said, so soon. He asked her, are you going to miss me? She shook her head and said, no. He said, I'm going to miss you. She hugged him. He said, we'll have plenty of opportunities to see each other. They were dining at a restaurant, and she looked at him. He asked, what's wrong? It seems like you have something to tell me. She said, after you go to Nanhu, can we video call each other every day? He said, of course, we can. She asked, won't you feel burdened by it? He asked her, will you? She replied, I won't. He said, then neither will I. She handed him a bowl of food and said, try this first. She then leaned over to check her phone and asked him a question. After he answered, she lowered her head to look at her phone again. Then she said to him, if we ever argue, we have to make up on the same day. No silent treatments, no disappearing acts. He said, okay, that sounds good. She lowered her head to look at her phone again, and he snatched her phone, looking at it and saying, wow, a guidebook for long-distance relationships. He asked her, are you worried about me? She replied, no just taking precautions in advance, trying to avoid any potential issues. He said, your strategy is well thought out. From now on, stick to it strictly. She asked him, I'll stick to it, but what about you? He said, then send me a copy, and I'll follow it too. She sent it to him, and he held his phone to read. We can argue, but not in front of others, he read aloud. She said, it's about maintaining our dignity in front of others. He continued reading, you don't have to reply instantly, but if you've seen it, you must reply, she said, it means that if you've seen the message, you must reply. Duan Jiaxu stepped out of Sanjian's house, reminiscing about the time when he and Sanjian at the same place, he had called Sanjian to go see Sanzi's teacher. Sanjian had told him, it's your promise, not mine. You go on your own. Duan Jiaxu said to Sanjian, back then, she followed me all the way to the door, just to make sure I would help her go see her teacher. Sanjian laughed and said, I've long forgotten about that. Duan Jiaxu video called Sanzi, 
holding a candy she gave him. He asked, aren't you in the dorm? She replied, no, I'm at home. I don't have class tomorrow morning, and I was craving snacks, so I came home. He leaned closer to a photo of them together and asked her, who's this? She asked him, you look really happy. Do you have good news? He said, of course. I went to see your parents today, and they don't object to us being together anymore. Excitedly, she asked him, how did you talk to them? They really said they don't object. He asked her, are you happy? She replied, very happy. He said, I miss you so much. She replied, I miss you too. Oh, by the way, are you free at the end of the month? He asked, why? Is something happening? She said, one of my design projects won an award, and there's an award ceremony at the end of the month. He said, wow, that's impressive. Are you inviting me? She asked, when? She replied, at the end of the month. He said, the end of the month is a bit tricky. I have that project in mind, and there are a lot of meetings scheduled then, so. I'm sorry. She said, it's okay. Focus on your work. But next time I win an award, you have to be there, Pinky promise. He smiled and hooked his pinky with hers, saying, Pinky promise. Duan Jiaxu approached Sanzi and asked, Hey there, why aren't you replying to your boyfriend's messages? She looked up and was surprised to see him. He then asked, Is this seat taken? Her roommate replied, No, go ahead and sit. He sat down and said to her roommate, Long time no see. She asked him, how come you're here? He texted her back, what's with that reaction? It seems like you don't miss me at all. She also texted him, asking, when did you come over? He replied, this morning's flight. She responded, so why are you here? He messaged her, coincidentally, the One Dream Project team also received an invitation, and Sister Si Yun asked me to come. She asked him, then why did you say you weren't coming? He replied, wasn't it supposed to be a surprise for you? I read in that guidebook of yours that it's good to give each other surprises now and then. She said, I thought you forgot. He said, how could I forget? It's even set as the wallpaper on my phone. She whispered to him, seeing you makes me so happy. Her roommate sent a WeChat message saying, Sang Sang and the big brother are displaying affection right next to me. Sanzi said to him, let's go sit at the back. She apologized to her roommate, saying, sorry, we'll go sit at the back. They sat in the last row, and she asked him, did you specifically change into a suit for this? He asked her, how does it look? Does this suit match the tie? She nodded and said, it looks great. He said, the tie seems a bit too tight. She leaned over to adjust his tie, and he kissed her as she did. She glanced around and asked, what are you doing? He asked her back, what are you doing? He noticed her becoming serious and asked, what's wrong? Do you think I'm being too shameless? She replied, you know it. He said, I'm sorry. It's just that I haven't seen you in so long. I really miss you. She said, I miss you too. Someone called Duan teacher, and he said to her, I'll go sign in. She grabbed him and tidied his hair. He smiled at her and said, wait for me to come back. After Sanzi's graduation ceremony, Duan Jiaxu proposed to her by the seaside. Her parents and brother were also present. He said to her, I'm sorry for the suddenness, but I've thought of many ways. Sanzi, I used to think that living alone for a lifetime wouldn't be a big deal, until I met you. You've shown me that being loved and loving someone is such a blissful thing. Her roommates took photos and recorded videos of them. He continued, saying to her, thank you for giving me so much love. It's because of you that I discovered I'm also a good person, and that I'm worthy of love too. She wiped the tears from his face with her hand. He said, it's because of you that I wanted to give it a try, to love someone wholeheartedly despite. Duan Jiaxu knelt down, took out the ring, and said to her, I have nothing else to offer you except for these six words, a lifetime, together, forever alone. I want you to witness these six words. I promise to spend my lifetime fulfilling this commitment. He asked her, will you marry me? 
Sanzi looked at the approving gestures from her parents, the encouragement from her classmates, and then she accepted the bouquet of flowers. Extending her left hand, with everyone present applauding and cheering, Duan Jiaxu placed the ring on her finger. They embraced each other amidst the blessings of family and friends, and sealed their engagement with a kiss, cheered on by their loved ones.